Hello, everybody. Andrea Trowski here with Dental L Tutoring. Sorry for the mess. We had just moved and we're still unpacking. But um, now this is telling me that I need to move some of the boxes kind of out of the way. So that's the next step. Um, but yeah, so what I would like to talk to you guys about today in this lovely video will be about radiography and processing errors specifically. So I would like to show you guys a book. It's an older one, but honestly, it's the best one that I've seen yet because for x-rays, the processing errors do not change. The only difference is when this book was, I guess, published, um, digital x-rays weren't really a thing. So this is talking about more um, processing errors when you're looking at the developer, the fixer. Um, it talks about the Panorex, but not so much um, digital x-rays. But the good thing is, and the honest thing is, for digital x-rays, there aren't a lot of processing errors because you can change things. Like if the film's too light, you can make the film um, darker. If the film's too dark, you can make it lighter. So things are so much easier now. But um, the reason why I'm showing you guys this book is because people always ask me if there's certain textbooks that I think you should purchase. And, you, and usually I say you don't have to purchase anything because if you um, sign up for my program, I can help you guys and you do not have to open up a textbook again. But if you want to study from a textbook, this one's awesome. Um, they probably even have a newer version now, but this is the best one that I've seen because, um, I'll show you guys, because, see, how can I show you guys with my webcam? It shows you all, well, that's a bad example, but there's tons of images, okay? So tons of images, look at that. And the thing that I like about it too, it's simple to read and it's a thin book. So like this, um, I remember when I took my board exam, I studied this whole book in two days and I learned everything that I had to know about processing errors. So I do teach a class on this um, in my um, board exam prep academy course, but if you haven't signed up for that yet, you should. But if you haven't signed up for it yet, let's just talk about it a little bit and let me ask you guys some questions. So I'm going to actually just, just open up a few pages. Oh, before I forget, you see these lovely images? You guys need to know that for the board exam. Um, dental hygiene students and dental assisting students. You guys have to know these. So if you need help with these, I can help you inside the course. But what I want to do is I just kind of want to ask you guys some basic questions and kind of go from there. And I want to show you guys some images too. So that's why I'm kind of looking through my book um, because I didn't pick up any online yet, so that's just why I kind of want to go through my book here. So I'm going to cover up the answer, even though it might be hard for you guys to see anyway. But what are these arrows pointing to? I'm trying to move it so you guys can all see. What are those arrows pointing to? And I have that photo specifically because it, it is always on the exam and it's not something that a lot of students study for because it's kind of hard, right? But what do you guys think that is? And I'm not even going to help you with any answers. Just if you need to stop the video, think about it, but what do you guys think that is? And if you're having a hard time with this one, it means that you need to study more radiography. And it's good to know too, because when you're in the office, waiting for a check by the dentist for like 10 minutes. What I like to do is if I took the x-rays on the patient, I will actually point out certain landmarks to them in case they're curious. I'll go, oh, hey, um, look at your um, sinuses here. You have low sinuses. Did you know that? You know, they, they just love that. And that's a lot better than just kind of sitting there twiddling your thumbs while you're waiting for a check. So, okay, I'll show you guys that again. What do you guys think this is? That is the Milo, um, am I saying that right? The, sorry, the mental um, ridge. I was about to say the Milo hyoid ridge, but that's something else. It's the mental ridge. So mental, think mandible. Mental, uh, foramen, mental means chin, if that makes sense. So this is the mental ridge. Okay, so this is your chin, pretty much. And see how the arrows are pointing to the white area here. So what is that white area called? It's radiopaque. 
Radiolucent is black. Radiopaque is white. So even having a look here, I mean, think outside the box. So I am helping all of you with some critical thinking here. Think outside the box. So even if you didn't know the answer, look at the teeth that are in the x-ray. Think, okay, those look like the incisors, okay? So would that be the maxillary incisors or the mandibular incisors? They're pretty small looking. So that's telling you it's on the mandible. So then think, okay, so if that's the mandibular incisors, okay, so it'd be over here. So what landmarks are, are over here? So that can help you guys think of it too. So if you, if you need help with that, let me know. So speaking of the mandible, I wanna show you guys another one that a lot of students get wrong as well. Let me just cover up the answer here. So I'm looking at this image here, okay? So this one right here, can everybody see that? Can everybody see the arrows are pointing to the middle area right here? And first I'd like to ask you, is this radiopaque or radiolucent? So this is radiolucent because it's black, right? Right in the middle there. So think of what I said to you guys before. Even if you don't know the answer, where in the mouth does this look to you? To me, it looks like the incisors because the teeth are small. And you can kind of even see the, the, um, the cusp of the canine here. So that tells you that that's the mandibular incisors. So then you have to think, well, what radiolucent area would be near the mandibular incisors? So what do you guys think? If you're not sure, stop the video and think about it. But what they are is the nutrient canals. So canals help things pass through, if that makes sense. And you need them for nerves, for blood vessels, for everything to pass through. They are radiolucent, not radiopaque. So the reason why they are likely showing you this picture is because for a new um, dental assistant or dental hygienist, they may look at that and go, oh, what the heck is that like line there? Like, oh my God, you know? Well, you know what? That's normal. That's normal. So it does help to know the normal anatomy too, so you can tell when something's not normal. So, so this is all the normal anatomy so far, but it does help to know the normal anatomy before you know the processing errors because then how do you know if things look off if you do not know how things look normally right so let me just change to kind of a different picture here let's do kind of an easy one oh weird and somebody's calling me from new york somebody's selling something obviously but um, let me do kind of an easy one for you guys. So this isn't a landmark, but this is something that you will see in the x-ray, okay? So in this, in this x-ray here, so depending on if you're like a first semester student or you're taking the board exam, you may or may not know this, this um, answer. If you're a first semester student, you are probably thinking, I don't know what that is. But if you're um, almost taking the board exam, you need to know this. So what do you guys see in this x-ray, like just right away, like what do you guys see? And I'm going to, um, to tell you because it's pretty obvious. It is calculus. So you see those like, um, we like to call them the calculus spurs. So you see those areas right, sorry, here, and it's kind of hard to do this um, here because I'm like looking at, at it as if I'm looking in a mirror. But you see those like notches there? Those are calculus spurs. You guys need to know what that looks like. In the bottom, it kind of shows it a little bit too, but it's a little harder to see, and you guys probably can't see it in your webcam. I wish I had um, a pen. But do you guys see the little spur right there? It's kind of hard to see because it's so little, but right there, that's a calculus spur as well. Okay, so is everybody okay with that one so far? Um, and I'll show you guys another one where the calculus looks a little bit smoother, but you can tell it's calculus because the tooth isn't normally like that, right? So right in between the teeth right here. Can everybody see that? So calculus is radiopaque. 
not radiolucent, but radiopaque. Let's do a few other ones because I'm having fun. Okay, I want to kind of show you guys an, an, an obvious one again too. So when you see this x-ray right here, what do you guys see? A lot of things should be like, whoa, like you should be looking at that x-ray and thinking, oh my God, what's happening to that tooth, right? So let's say your patient says that they have a sore tooth. You take a PA. So you take a periapical and, and you see that. Oh my goodness, you should get the dentist in right away because that patient has a cavity, a huge one right here. See that like large um, radio lucent area? That's a cavity. An abscess is right down here. So when you see another um, radio lucent area at the apices of your teeth, so at the apex of the root, that's an abscess. <coughs> I'm sorry, guys. So the cavity is into the nerve of the teeth because you can see the nerve, um, the radiolucent sort of canals right here and the pulp. So it's into the nerve. So that patient needs a root canal. Like there's a lot happening. Um, and it's pretty large that they might not even be able to perform the root canal. They may have to take the tooth out because the thing about a root canal is there is such a thing as being too late for a root canal. Okay. So is everybody good with that so far? Now, I want to show you guys some processing errors and not just any processing errors. I want to show you the ones that typically appear on the board exam. This is fun. I like this. Okay. Let me just cover up the answer. What do you guys feel this x-ray is right here? See that um, artifact? I'm just, I'm trying to cover up the answer right here. So what do you guys think uh, that is? What do you guys think? This one you got to know. So stop the video if you're not sure. So what do you guys think that is? Do you think it's a fingernail? Do you think it's um, x-rays that were touching each other? Do you think it's static? Like what are you guys thinking? Like think of possible answers here. So the answer is static. So this is static. But then I want you also to think, okay, well, how does that happen? How does static happen? So this x-ray, oh, sorry. So this x-ray right here. So how does that happen? That happens from opening up the film too fast. So for a digital x-ray, that wouldn't happen. But for um, like a normal um, x-ray where you have the um, package, you have the foil, all of that. So static happens if you just simply open it up too fast because the foil sort of rubs against the x-ray and the package. And if you um, open it like super duper fast, that's what happens. So I, don't, I do not only want you to know the errors, but to also know what causes it and then how to fix them. So for static, if it's caused by the film being open too fast, how would you fix it? Open the film up slowly. That's all it is. Easy, right? Right? Easy. Um, okay, I want to show you guys another one that's kind of similar here. Okay. So the x-ray beside it, okay. Um, oh, sorry, you guys. It's kind of hard to see, actually. I have to move it down like this. Okay. This one's kind of hard to see, so if you guys can't see it, that's okay. But this x-ray right here, what do you guys think? I'm trying to move it so, so you guys can see. It's kind of hard to see, though, right? Well, yeah, it's kind of hard to see. It's a lot easier to see in the textbook. That is a fingerprint. So if you see what looks like a fingerprint on the film, it's a fingerprint. Um, how does that happen? By touching the film. Because as you know, as you're, um, as you're opening it up, you, you um, need to handle it carefully, right? You have to hold it by the outside edges. Because if you don't, then your fingerprint will get on it, and then, uh-oh, there's a fingerprint. So you don't want that, right? Okay, I wanted to kind of show you guys kind of like a trickier one. So we'll do one more. It's not funny, I'm trying to look for, <coughs> I'm sorry, you guys. Um, I know, this is a good one. So this is a panorex, okay? So look at the top panorex here. Now, 
if you're a new student, you may not really know what you're looking at, so I'll tell you. So the front anterior teeth on the top are large, like they shouldn't look this large. There, is that a little bit easier? So they shouldn't look this large. Why would that happen? Does anybody know? Could it be the patient's chin is too high, the patient's chin is too low? Could it be they're sitting too close um, to the Panorex machine? Or could it be they're too far back? You know, think of things like that. So what would cause it? So <clears throat> I'm sorry, you guys, I need some water, but it's downstairs. So after the video, I'll get some water. So if these teeth here look too large and sort of out of proportion to the rest of the teeth, it's because the patient was sitting too far back. Now, if the patient was sitting too far forward, these teeth would look too small. So how do you fix that? You make sure they are in the center and they're um, biting into the bite block of the panoramic machine. Because if their front teeth aren't um, sitting in that notch of the bite block, then they're too far forward, right? If, if, um, if, if uh, what am I trying to say? If again, if the teeth aren't sitting in the bite block, then they could also be too far back. So make sure that the front teeth are closing in, oh sorry, are like this, you know, in the notch of the bite block because that helps to keep the patient still. It helps to show you where their, you know, head should be. And that way, when the panoramic machine is turned on and goes around the head, it will not, you know, um, hit them or hit them this way, right? So it's important. Okay, guys, so if you guys want to learn more about radiography and processing errors, you should be a member inside the Board Exam Prep Academy because we talk about all of that. In fact, we have a new session coming up on such a thing because I, 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 I had a student ask me, um, to teach it to them again yesterday or the day be uh, before, so why not, right? Because you can never learn too much. So if you guys have questions, let me know and I'll see you guys in the next video.